Hey everyone, this is Bath Metrics. Welcome to episode three of my video series called Mixing Loud with Clip to Zero. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the plugins that I think are super helpful for this method. You probably should plan on getting if you're going to try and apply this method for yourself. Before I start out, I should mention that this is part of an ongoing video series that I'm going to be building out in this playlist on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be covering a whole lot of juicy topics. Right now we're on episode three. All of this is still coming. So I recommend you subscribe to my channel uh, so you can be aware when each new episode comes out. Let me also make clear that I have paid for all the plugins I'm going to be showing you. I have no promotional relationship with any of these vendors. They're just great plugins that I rely on every day to make the CTZ method very fast and easy for myself. Okay, so getting right into it, three of the plugins I'm going to recommend I consider must-haves, especially the first two, DP Meter and K-Clip. You can kind of get away without using any kind of oscilloscope at first, but as you'll see uh, throughout the upcoming episodes, oscilloscopes are super helpful for understanding what's going on and making good decisions about your gain staging and your clipping. Uh, so you are gonna wanna pick up one of these sooner or later. Um, and then the other three plugins you'll see me use a lot I consider nice to have. So if you have the budget for these, by all means, get them. They'll certainly be helpful. I will talk about using them. But you can really get through most of what I'm going to show you just with these two clip-ins alone. And this is important if you're on a budget, right? I know not everyone's made of money. Money's tight for some of us. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what these plugins cost, okay, DP Meter is wonderful, and it's free. So there's no reason not to get it. K-Clip is the best clipper overall for, especially for starting out with this process. And I start with K-Clip all over my project. Uh, my project template is full of clippers and they're all instances of K-Clip at first. Maybe later I'll replace them with either Saturate or Track Limit. But I start myself with K-Clip because it's just great. Okay, and you'll see why as, as this series progresses. And this one, is usually like $88 or $90, but it's often on sale for $40. So you just want to wait for it to be on sale, pick it up at the good sale price. Um, and then for the oscilloscopes, you're, you're a little limited. If you're on Windows, it's a no-brainer choice. You want to go with SciScope Pro, and it's pretty cheap at only 15 euros. It's wonderful. If you're on Mac, you can't use this amazing oscilloscope but the kind of runner up that's almost as good as something called Ozillos Megascope. It's a little more pricey at around 60 US dollars. Um, but if you're on Mac, that's what you're stuck with. So, you know, for 40 to 55 to uh, maybe as much as $100 if you're on Mac, you can get the three that you really need to have, okay? And then the others are pricey, but they're worth considering. And I won't go into too much more detail about these. I'll just talk you through them as I show them to you. All right, uh, what else is good to know? Yeah, if you're really, really on a tight budget, just prioritize these two. Everything else can come later. Okay, so let's talk about the specific plugins themselves. I think the fastest way to do this, I'm not going to demo each of these. You're going to see me using these plenty in all the upcoming episodes. So this is going to be a nice short video, unusual for me. Let's just kind of walk through them real quick, show you where to get them. DP meter looks like this. It's from TB Pro Audio in Barvaria. This is free. It's wonderful. The cool thing about this is not it's not just a meter. It also has these little M buttons that are loudness matching buttons. And the way it works is you can put a value you want to hit in this box here called gain. And then you can measure something and say, okay, well, I want my um, momentary loudness to be exactly negative 10. And so you, you set this to be negative 10 up here, 
And then let's say your momentary loudness measures 11.8, like we see in the screenshot. Well, if I click this button, it'll adjust the gain here. I'm sorry, you set the reference level, my bad. You set the reference level to what you want. So you, I'd put negative 10 here. And then if I click this button, it'll automatically adjust the gain so that this value will now measure negative 10. And that's what's really cool about this. It's a super fast way to just pick a reference level for a peak value, a LUFS value, whatever you want. Take a quick measurement, click this little M button in whatever box you're trying to match to your reference level, and then it automatically sets the gain. So it's really cool, and it's a very useful part of my method. Um, K-Clip looks like this. It's from Kazrog. Uh, let's see, is it on sale right now? Yep, sure enough, it's on sale all the time. So, you know, it's not hard to find it for this price. Um, at least at the time I made this video, it's on sale. Uh, this is great. It's the easiest clipper to use. It's the best starting clipper for this method. What's cool about this is this little link button lets you quickly adjust how much you're clipping it, and it'll automatically compensate the output to keep everything at the same perceived loudness as you're adjusting the amount of clipping. And so it just makes it really easy to hear that point where it stops being transparent and starts hurting the sound in a bad way. And then you can just back it off a little bit, click this little link button to unlink them, double click this knob and boom, now you've got your full clipping and everything's much louder. And it was just super fast and easy to set. Plus this, you know, waveform display is pretty useful for visually seeing what you're clipping. So it's the best clipper out there uh, for this method and totally a must have, okay? Now for the oscilloscopes, um, You'll see me using SciScope all the time. It's amazing, especially this overlapped layered view, and it just has features galore. The thing about this is it's a multi-channel uh, and it's also beat synced. So you can make it show you one bar at a time or one beat at a time or two bars or four bars or a quarter note, right? And um, it stays perfectly in sync. It shows you how waveforms are interacting with each other and summing with each other, which is super useful. And it's just a really, as soon as you can afford this, get it if you're on Windows. It's so cheap. There's no point not having it if you're on Windows. Now, unfortunately, this thing is Windows only. So if you're on Mac, this is the closest thing Mac users have. It's called a Zillow's Megascope. It's a little more pricey. It has uh, the same kind of stacked or overlapping waveforms, although they're not showing us a screenshot of the overlapping waveforms. Um, it doesn't make it as easy to see your summed values, but it's still very useful and there is a way to see summing uh, with Ozillos Megascope. And I'll show you that when I, the first time I demo using the oscilloscopes in this upcoming series. All right, let's move on. So this is getting into the the need to haves, I'm sorry, the nice to haves. Track limit is a good alternative clipper. It's technically not a clipper. <clears throat> it's actually a limiter. It's a wideband limiter. It's a scaled down version of DMG Audio's Limitless, which is their full featured mastering limiter. This thing is super lightweight, sounds fantastic. It works really well on certain kinds of tonal material and will introduce a little bit less um, unwanted hot distortion than a clipper might do on that same material. So it's a nice alternative to have for certain kinds of sounds, like on vocals. Sometimes a vocal won't sound as good with a clipper as it will with a, a limiter like this. Um, and you know this is worth picking up if you can. It, it acts like a limiter, it's super lightweight, I'm sorry, it acts like a clipper and it's incredibly lightweight. So you can put tons of these all over your project and they won't bog down your project. If you try to do that with a full mastering limiter like Pro-L or Limitless or Ozone, if you try to put that on more than just your master bus, your whole project's just gonna fall apart because it's, it's gonna use way too much resources. This was designed to be like part of a set of channel inserts. Um, and so it's super lightweight, sounds great. Okay, Spectre. Now this is not a clipper. This is part of what I call saturating from the bottom. And 
there's a plugin out there by Denise Audio. Let's go find that real quick. Okay. So this is the other plugin that's similar to Spectre. Um, I wouldn't buy this if you don't have either one. Show me a screenshot. If you don't have either one of them, don't go out and buy this by Spectre instead. Um, this is a lot harder to use. The UI is a lot more confusing, but it kind of has the same basic idea in that if we go back to Spectre, it looks kind of like an EQ, but there's only boost. There's no cut. There's five bands. And what this really is under the covers, this is a parallel saturator, and it's a multi-band parallel saturator. So there's always your dry signal running through this. And then on the parallel signal, you're taking a specific band, and you can boost that band with any kind of Q width you want. And you can drag these around just like Pro-Q or any kind of graphic equalizer. You just drag these around in your spectrum and give it a certain amount of boost in a certain spectral range with a certain kind of um, saturation algorithm, like solid, tube, etc. And you can control the whole wet and dry mix. It, it's perfect for saturating from the bottom and creating a sense of perceived boost like an EQ to any one of these frequencies, but unlike an EQ, it's not screwing up your phase relationships because it's not an EQ. EQs work by changing the phase of your frequencies. Parallel saturation is a whole different beast. It's basically saying, all right, starting with these frequencies in this area that I'm picking up with this little control here, make some extra harmonics in this separate parallel channel, and then add those harmonics back in from the bottom. And therefore, it's not changing the phase of your original signal. It's a very different process, but it sounds like an EQ. It sounds kind of like doing an EQ boost, but in a much less destructive way. And it really can increase the perceived hotness or loudness of any range of your spectrum. If there's not enough thumpy boom in a certain part of the low end, you can add that real easily. If there's not enough hotness or brightness or articulation in the mid-range, you can add that. If, if you want to bring up the air a little bit, you can just, you know, increase high frequencies up here. Wonderful tool. And it is expensive, but it's worth every penny. It's an amazing way to uh, do some saturating from the bottom so that you don't have to do nearly as much clipping from the top. Okay. Uh, and then finally, Saturate by Newfangled Audio is kind of a specialized replacement for K-Clip. And what makes this unique is it's a spectral clipper, and this screenshot here kind of shows you the difference. With K-Clip, if you clip, um, if you hard clip frequencies, like, you know, the sine wave with some other things mixed in it, this looks like a, a kick and a snare combined probably. Um, you can see that you get this flat top, this razor sharp flat top, okay? And that's okay. Clipping is actually kind of okay, <laughs> as you'll see. But what Saturate does is if there's high frequency information happening at the same time, it preserves that high frequency information and kind of keeps it going along the edge of the flat top right here. See the, all these little jaggies? And this is... Your ears may or may not notice the difference, but this is certainly nicer to the drivers in the speaker systems that are playing your music, okay? If you have a really long gap of just flat, fully maxed out clip where it's just saying hold the cone in one spot for several milliseconds for a long time, uh, that can be hard on drivers, especially big heavy drivers like sub arrays. So by keeping some high frequency information here, you're being a little nicer to the drivers, okay? Because they're always moving a little bit to match the high frequency movement along the clip. So that's, it's, again, it's kind of a nuance. You may not hear a difference, um, but if you can pick up saturate, I tend to find myself testing saturate uh, when I get into the final mix down of my product, my project. And a lot of my instances of K-Clip that I might start with, 
By the time I get to final mix down and mastering, I might replace a lot of those K-clips with saturate instead, just because I know it'll be a little bit mm, easier on systems that are playing things. Or maybe to be more accurate, I put it on very strategic buses. Like you don't need to worry about those flat top clips in your early tracks. You only care about flat tops by the time they come out your master. That's where it's problematic because it's your master that's going to get played back on club systems and festival systems. So if you understand how Saturate works and why it does what it does, you can choose to put it on a few very specific high-level buses to make sure that you're getting some cleaner looking clips by the time you're done and everything's rolled up to your master. Again, I'll show you this as the series goes on. So that's it for today. Uh, just plan on picking up those, those plugins, and we'll continue with the next episode soon. Talk to you later.